Hi guys, JP from FSI Panel. Welcome to this video. Today I'm excited to show you a powerful new feature that will enhance your flight experience, especially if you are flying the APM DG777 on long haul flights. In this video, we will explore the standard edition feature that allows you to save your flight mid cruise using the snapshot feature. This is incredibly useful if you encounter any issue like a CTD, crash to desktop, or if you simply want to resume your flight later, exactly where you left off, even on a different day. As well, don't forget to check the other video that I released today, where I will showcase you a new feature as well, this time on the Advanced Edition. You will be able to slew your aircraft to any FMC waypoint on your flight plan, adjusting fuel time along the way. This is very useful if you don't have time to complete your flight in real time, but still want to arrive with the correct weight and timing. The link, the link sorry, will be available at the end of the, day of the video, so make sure to watch it as well. All right, so let's jump in the cockpit and see how to save our flight. And before I forget, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. All right, so here we are in the cockpit of our 777-300ER. I'm flying from Geneva to New York. The flight is Swiss 2-2. We departed Geneva around 1 hour and 12 minutes ago. You can see that we are approaching the position amp up at flight level 340 for the time being. And we still have a long way, 2,900 miles to reach Kennedy. This is Geneva to Kennedy. And now, for some reason, I would like to make sure I can save that exact situation right there in case I have a power outage or if I want to, to stop the flight for some reason and start it again maybe later or even tomorrow. So a few things to take into account when you do that. First of all, make sure your aircraft is not flying at the absolute ceiling. It's already very complicated to save everything at high altitude. So here you can see that my maximum altitude is 360. Recommend the 300, optimum 349. This is why I'm flying at 340. So if you will try now to save your flight at 360 where the aircraft is just barely able to maintain the altitude, then the result might not be the same. So always make sure that you are flying at an altitude where the aircraft is supposed to be at the correct time of the flight. Now, another thing to make sure, make sure your heading is synchronized. That's one thing. And as well that the altitude that you have right there match your altitude. Do not set already a top of descent 320 and you have 340 there. So basically, we should be exactly in that configuration when we fly in cruise. We should always have the heading bug synchronized and the altitude in cruise is of course the same as we have right there in our mode control panel. So now we are in a very good situation to save the flight. So let's do that and see how this works. So we are about 30 miles from position amp up. So let's start FSI panel. All right, the FSI panel has just started and you can see that the uh, airplane has been detected correctly. We're on a PMDG 777-300ER. And now, of course, in the air, no airport has been selected. So here, it's completely up to you if you want to select Geneva Departure Airport or Kennedy as Arrival Airport. It is important to have your own strategy and to remember which one you set if you want to uh, find again your snapshot later on because the snapshots are filtered based on the airport that you select. So here I will decide to, to, to take the airport of origin, in that case Geneva. So I will just type in Geneva and then I will just select the runway I departed, runway 22. That's important. That's the only thing you need to make sure that you have the airport here and the runway. It can be as well Kennedy runway 04 left, doesn't matter, but make sure you have something on these two fields. Then we are going to click take snapshot. So when you do that, this window will come and now you can put anything you want. So I will put here uh, top of climb and then I can put top of climb around one hour in the flight. And then I will click on save snapshot. Now if you go back to your cockpit, then the aircraft is temporary on a position freeze and the snapshot is now taken by FSI panel. Once this is done, you will get the confirmation on your screen coming right on the top left corner. So wait for the confirmation and then the flight will resume. So let's see that happening now. We get the snapshot saved successfully. Okay. 
and as well snapshot save successfully on your screen and now the aircraft is flying again we were in fact around 20 miles from Ampop. All right now that's it my flight is saved so what I will do now I will simulate a crash to desktop so we'll restart the simulator on the runway Geneva runway 22 and we will try to position the aircraft at the same state as we have now with 55 tons of fuel at level 340. When you restart a snapshot, make sure you start it with engines running as always on the runway. Do not start it in a parking position with engines off and all the doors open. This is not going to work. So make sure you position your aircraft on runway 22, on the runway that you selected when you saved your snapshot and with the engines running. All right, so let's do that now. Okay, so here we are in the sim. I will select uh, the 777 and we are selecting Geneva, runway 22. The time of departure, I will set the same time as when I departed and we were one hour in the flight. So what I will do, I will just add the one hour here. So it was around one hour 22. This is if you want to match the time where you departed. So when you save the snapshot, take a time, what time was it in UTC and just put the correct timing right there to make sure you are at the same time if you want to resume the flight. Then click on fly and normally your 777 will be loaded with engines running as we selected a runway. Now if your MSFS is loading the aircraft on another runway, this is not very important as we will go airborne. So do not worry if you find yourself at the correct airport, but, not a, but on a different runway. That will, not, that will not affect at all the snapshot feature. So let's wait until the sim is ready and we will see how we can resume a flight. Here we go, it looks like we are ready. So I will click ready to fly. And I should see myself on the runway. And as you can see, we are on runway 04, so it doesn't matter. And I make sure that my engines are running. IRS are aligned, so everything looks good. I will not set anything else. You see the fuel is wrong. And we are going now to load our snapshot. So let's start FSI panel and load the snapshot. Okay, now the aircraft is on ground, so FSI panel should detect the airport and the runway automatically. That's fine. The 777 has been detected. We are good to go. And now you click on load snapshot. Now you have the snapshot. So the one that we saved was top of climb, top of climb around one hour in the flight. That's the one we want. You can even export that snapshot and share it with your friends or in a forum. Right click to export your snapshot. So if you want to save and send this snapshot to your colleague, to your friends, you can save the snapshot and they will just have to drag and drop it over the main window of FSI panel to import it into their own database. Now we are ready, so I'll click select. And as you can see, 34,000 feet, ready to go. We will click move aircraft and then we should not touch anything until FSI panel has completed the work. So let's go ahead and click move aircraft. We go in the sim. The first thing we should see here is the flaps moving up as we don't want to position the aircraft with flaps five at flight level 340. So the flaps are moving up and then we go in the air. We might get a lot of warning. So do not worry about the warning just give some time to FSI panel to adjust everything. So you can see that right now everything looks wrong, but now the altitude has been set to 34 to fly level 340. We can see that the gear is going up and then everything will settle down slowly. So here, give some time to FSI panel. It will take a minute or so and everything will be set. As you can see, we are going down to fly level 340. So here you can help FSI panel if you see that the aircraft is descending slowly in vertical speed and you want it to go faster, you can increase the rate, but you can just leave it going. The idea here is to go down to flight level 340 and then FSI panel will give you the control. So about 1000 feet to go and I will use that time to show you what you can see if you use the snapshot feature for high altitude. Cabin altitude delta P is high as the aircraft was not expected to go with a rate of climb of basically 34,000 feet a second when FSI panel bring the aircraft in the air. So now the aircraft rate, the rate of the cabin is increasing and the delta P is decreasing. So within a few minutes, everything will be back to normal. So do not worry about that. Now we are approaching 34,000 feet. You can see that the aircraft is adding thrust 
and we should maintain the speed and FSI panel will tell you that everything is ready and engage VNAV as we were in VNAV mode and basically VNAV part, 1 hour 17 in the flight, 20 miles to amp up and I just have to hold my brake, 3 seconds, 1, 2 and 3 and off we go, we can resume our flight after having a uh, power outage or crash to desktop, I'm exactly at the same time and in the same position. Something that can happen if you do that, and I will show you that into your progress page, number two. Right now you can see that we have a totalizer fuel of 55 tons. This is what we have on board. And when we departed Geneva, we had a calculator that we, we took around 68 tons. So there is a discrepancy right there. And you can see that the aircraft senses that we have used only 200 kilogram, even though we, fly, we flew just one hour and 18. So of course, that doesn't look very good. And you might get a master caution with a fuel disagree, progs page 2-4. So then you just need to go onto prog page 2, and you will have here the procedure to be done. So basically, I'll show you that. Uh, now on the on a, a previous flight that I did and you can see the procedure you can see here that we have totally used 0 0.4 tons from the right engines 0 0.4 from the left engine so we basically burned about one ton and we have 22 tons on board and we departed with more than 80 tons so of course the FMC is very nice and tells you there is a fuel disagree which might if you open the checklist tells you that the, to the totalizer fuel quantity and the FMC calculated fuel quantity disagree. Objective to decide if a fuel leak is suspected and select the most accurate fuel value. Basically, of course, she believes that we might have lost some fuel. Okay, so we can see here for us, we know exactly the reason. We move the aircraft. So basically here, if a fuel leak is suspected, go to fuel leak. It's not the case. Select progress page 2, select totalizer, unless it is inaccurate. And select the most accurate value, all right? So what we're going to do here, we have the totalizer. And we have the calculated. So now if we look into our fuel here, we have 22 tons. 22 tons. So use that one. Use. Now we are basically using the fuel which is the correct one and there is no more master caution all right that's done now we are in the right position everything looks fine we save the flight and in case you have a ctd basically you are good to go there is no automatic feature to save every half an hour or so so please make sure if you have let's say after one hour another hour or so and anyone to save it just go ahead and save a new snapshot all right, that's about it for this video. On the next video, you will see the link now on your screen and as well on the description down below. I will show you how you can basically move your aircraft to any pilot waypoint, sorry, to any uh, waypoint on your flight plan. So if we look in our flight plan, we have a long, long route to New York and maybe you don't have time to complete the whole flight, even at high speed if we increase to four times. It's still a three hours flight or two hours flight. So maybe you want to move the aircraft just before the top of descent. So with the new feature, you will select which point you want to go. FSI panel will move the aircraft, adjust the fuel, adjust the time, adjust the track. And basically it's exactly the same as if you have flown the aircraft yourself for eight hours and you find yourself at the top of descent. So this is on the next video and this is on the advanced edition. So make sure to check it out. And if you have any question or comments, please drop it in the section down below. Feel free to join FSI Panel Forum. And I see you very soon for another video. Thank you, guys, and stay safe. Bye-bye.